about functional groups in organic chemistry. And functional groups are where we add dip atoms other than carbon and hydrogen to the carbon framework. Uh, and these functional groups create uh, special places within the molecule that give it special properties or functions. Therefore, we call them functional groups. You might uh, think of adding these atoms, and the atoms we're going to talk about are oxygen and nitrogen. Adding these atoms adds a little bit more personality to the basic hydrocarbon. Again, it's the carbon that makes up the bulk of the structure, but it's these other atoms, oxygen, in our case, oxygen and nitrogen, that add some special functionality. So hence, function equals property. All right. So the simplest functional group is adding an oxygen to an already saturated hydrocarbon. So our simplest hydrocarbon is altogether methane, CH4, one carbon, four hydrogens. We draw the Lewis structure. Hope everybody can do that. We attach those four hydrogens to the carbon. And there we go. And now what we want to do is add oxygen. Okay. Well, oxygen has six valence electrons. And so I hope everybody can say something with six valence electrons is always going to form two covalent bonds. Again, let's think about it. The simplest molecule of oxygen is our old friend water. Oxygen in the middle, it's six valence electrons. We've got hydrogens out here, each one with one valence electron. And those hydrogens and the oxygen are going to share valence electrons to form water. Okay. So this first category of functional group derivatives of water. So um, take a peek. We're going to squeeze an oxygen in here. Where are we going to put the oxygen? Well, the oxygen has to be a bridge. And at least starting with methane, the only place the oxygen can bridge is between a carbon and a hydrogen. So our first and simplest alcohol is CH4O. And we just squeeze, slip that oxygen in there between a carbon and a hydrogen. And we have an alcohol. Okay. Alcohols are characterized by having a carbon connected to an oxygen connected to hydrogen. So this is the pattern for an alcohol. Okay. So if we want to build more complicated alcohols, what do you think we do? Well, we're just going to add more carbon. So starting with, we started with one carbon. If I go to two carbons, again, if we go around and put in all those hydrogens, I have the second simplest alcohol like this. Okay. And again, notice the similarity. We call it an alcohol because it contains the same pattern, carbon, oxygen, hydrogen, that we saw up here. So these are both alcohols. Okay, alcohols. Okay. Notice even the name of alcohol tips us off. If you look at the name alcohol, right there in the middle, You've got that COH. Isn't that kind of clever? I don't think that was intentional, but uh, there we go. That kind of reminds you alcohols always contain the carbon, oxygen, hydrogen link. Great. Um, we won't emphasize the naming of these, but alcohols always end in OL. So our simplest alcohol is called methanol. That doesn't surprise you. The methane part tells us it's one carbon. Okay. And I suspect you've all come up with a name for this one. This is ethanol. Ethanol is a very popular alcohol. Ethanol is the alcohol of alcoholic beverages. So we really should call those ethanolic beverages. Ethanol is also a fuel. It's a biofuel. Ethanol can be produced from corn and other uh, grains. Corn is the predominant source. 
and ethanol is added to gasoline. So uh, approximately 10% of the gasoline that's used in your automobile contains ethanol. So ethanol is an important alcohol. So to summarize, um, any molecule that contains that carbon, oxygen, hydrogen combination is an alcohol. Okay? And so we tend to show the general formula of an alcohol like this. We use R to represent any carbon group. So that could be one carbon or many carbons. Okay? And that carbon group must be attached to an oxygen which is then attached to a hydrogen. So there is the general formula for an alcohol. Good. So those are alcohols. Um, there's actually another way to insert an oxygen into a hydrocarbon and maintaining all single bonds. And in that case, you have to start out with two carbons, at least two carbons. And in this case, instead of having a carbon, oxygen, carbon, excuse me, an ox carbon, oxygen, hydrogen link, oxygen can link two carbons. So for example, the simplest of this new functional group is this molecule. Notice again oxygen is bridging two atoms, but in this case the oxygen is bridging two carbon atoms. That is a different pattern than what we saw up above. And anything that contains the carbon, oxygen, carbon uh, combination is called an ether. And what's pictured at the left here is the simplest ether, and its common name is dimethyl ether. Ethers, pretty unreactive molecules, okay? Um, again, as opposed to alcohols, which are always going to be on the outside of the molecule, notice alcohols always end in hydrogen. Ethers, because they bridge two carbon atoms, can be found in the middle of a carbon structure somewhere. Ethers are relatively unreactive, and probably their most popular use um, is uh, they were some of the first anesthetics that were used. So dimethyl ether was found to be a powerful anesthetic when surgery started no hundred uh, or so years ago. All right, so those are ethers. Ethers and alcohols are possible isomers of each other. And how do we make more complicated ethers? We make more complicated ethers by just changing what's attached to that, car that oxygen bridge. So we can add more carbons to either side of the ether here and just continue to make it more complicated. These are all ethers because they all contain that carbon-oxygen-carbon combination. Okay? So the whole variety of ethers. Good. The general formula for an ether is given by this, where R again is some carbon group. But now the possibility is that we can have a carbon group on one side of the oxygen. And I've designated that as R sub A. And we can have another carbon group on the other side. That, can have, that doesn't have to be the same, so therefore I gave it the designation R sub B. Okay? So R sub A and R sub B must be carbons. So again, notice the difference between the general formula of an ether and the general formula of an alcohol. Okay.